How to become a better writer. One week ago at 2 a.m. in the morning, I decided to hop on YouTube and answer that question for myself. I found this video right here by Matthew and Cena. I'd write and copy work a year's worth of writing from someone I really looked up to, but instead of taking a whole year to do this, I give myself only seven days. Immediately my brain got to work. He got results, I was gonna do the exact same thing, but tweak it just a little bit to fit my needs. This is how I became a better writer in seven days. Is it just me or do you guys also get random bursts of inspiration at 2 a.m.? That's me right now. I just watched a video by Matthew Encino. Matthew is a Filipino-American content creator from Los Angeles, and it's really inspiring to see someone who looks like me thriving and making such incredible content. I'll link the video in the description below. Matthew Encino, thank you again for the inspiration. Challenge accepted. I'm gonna go attempt this myself. And as you can tell, I don't have a sleep schedule. Copy work is simple. Take a piece of writing from an author that you really like and copy it word for word. Reflect, rinse, and repeat. Copy from one, it's plagiarism. Copy from two, it's research. John Milton. So I noticed something really, really interesting about copy work, and I have my piano here to show it. Copy work is not unique. It's a thing that many other creative fields also do, and when I was looking into copy work, I noticed, whoa, this is a lot like what we do in jazz, and we call it transcribing. So for me, I'm a jazz musician. And because jazz is more of an oral tradition than a codified one, the way that we learn jazz is by listening to the records and copying what we hear. Let me show you how it's done. So I'm gonna listen to a track. So I can see that for any creative field, the principle is the same. I set out to conquer the mountain of Seth Godin's writing. Seth is the author of 19 best-selling books and 7,500 articles that he posts daily on his blog. He's the definition of prolific. And the thing I really admire about his writing is how succinct and effective he is. He can communicate in two sentences what would take a noob like me a paragraph. In his video, Matthew set the goal of copying 365 articles in one week. That's 52 articles a day. And he reported that he was overambitious with his goal and the sheer volume of writing turned out to actually be counterproductive to his goal of comprehension and of absorbing the material. So for myself, since I'm also working during the day, I've decided to just do five. But with those five, I'm gonna be very intentional and very thorough in my reflections. I'm also gonna be publishing three of my own articles and incorporating in a classic writing exercise by Julia Cameron called Morning Pages. Good morning, you guys. It is 9 a.m. right now, and I'm about to write some pages. So basically, morning pages are one to three pages of strictly stream of consciousness writing. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It is completely uninhibited flow. So whatever comes to your mind, it's like, oh, I should go get the keys today. What if bananas are actually pancakes and that, you know, like random, <laughs> just whatever comes to your mind. So even if the block says, oh, that's stupid, I'm still gonna keep writing. The entire idea is to outrun your creative blocks. So let's go for a run. Boom, that's a page done. Whole page of Strictly Stream of Consciousness. Um, I mean, if you did pause that, if you can understand my writing, then congrats. Uh, even I can't understand my own writing. The cool benefit about morning pages is that you get insights and revelations and eureka moments and ideas just like out of the blue, out of, out of the mist, ideas will just come to you. It's like you're a metal pole in the middle of a thunderstorm and ideas just strike you like that. This opens you up to ideas. And I hope by doing more of these and also doing copy work, like ideas are just gonna swirl around me and it's gonna be really, really cool. So, 35 articles, seven morning pages, and three original pieces. Let's do this. All right. So I just wrapped up my first little writing sprint and that was so much fun. I really like this exercise. I think I picked the perfect amount to work on. I did. Um, I calculated five articles take me one hour to write out. 
but I was really feeling it and I decided to go for six today because I'm really enjoying this exercise. I'm seeing so much that I can pick up in my own writing. I'm seeing the techniques that I can use for when I'm writing new things. I'm learning new words like cogent, which means clear, concise, and and convincing. One thing I'm also noticing is that even my notes are starting to sound like Seth Godin. I'm using like the writing techniques as he writes and it's really really cool to see that and I can't wait to do some more tomorrow. Anyways, I will see you guys tomorrow for day two. The rest of the days continued smoothly. Every morning I would do my morning pages and every evening after work I would sit down and crank out five articles like clockwork. Though sometimes this got boring. So I decided to switch it up by writing outside in the sun or even in the middle of rehearsals. And while yes, I was developing my chops as a writer, this exercise was also developing my mindset. Seth writes a lot about creativity, perfectionism, business, resilience, decision-making, the works, you know. And by sitting with his writing daily, I absorbed those insights by osmosis. So then on day four, I sat down to write the first of my three original articles and something incredible happened. Okay, so I just wrote my first article of my own original thoughts and something really extraordinary happened as I was writing. It just flowed out effortlessly and it was sort of in the same sort of style and just felt easy to express myself and to format things and to be articulate and to articulate what's on my mind. And I can immediately see the effects of doing this exercise just from doing it. Oh my goodness, I need to keep doing this. That was really fun. It just flowed out like that. I like that. Right? <laughs> I like it. It's very just like snatched. Very just like, it's not kind of just long for no reason. It's kind of just to the point, but very like entertaining to read. I loved it. It's like mm -hmm. I wanted to keep on reading more and more and more. I continued on to write two more articles in one day. However, I wanted to challenge myself on the third and final article. Hi, I'm writing article number three and I wanted to try something different for this one. So for article number one, I talked about how to get better at music. For article number two, I talked about how to make better decisions. And for article number three, I want to try keeping it like really, really short, like two or three sentences, trying to do what Seth does and try to keep it really succinct and really cogent. I struggled more, but to no avail. I was feeling creatively stuck. So I decided to take a break. Hell yeah. The boy loves his nuggets. <laughs> And when I got back to work, I had a breakthrough. So I was feeling really blocked writing this article. So I had a crazy idea to change the font that I was typing in to the exact font that Seth Godin uses on his website, just so I could channel the energy a little bit more. <laughs> and the minute I changed the font and got into Seth Godin's brain, suddenly all the ideas started flowing and then we got something super fast. And it's like, I'm really proud of it. <laughs> and I really like it. Here are some of the main things that I learned from copying Seth's writing. Number one, less is more. Lesson number two, if it doesn't need to be said. Number three, contrast your pacing. Basically, the way that Seth writes is that he'll have a really, really long sentence where he's carrying on for a long period of time and he's really elaborating and extending on the point, really drawing it out. And then he ends with a punchline. And then he continues on with a longer section where he continues to elaborate on his points some more. Maybe he adds in bullet points to make it a list to draw your attention along until he draws your attention. And then you're at the end. Another thing that I learned from his writing is that he punctuates with purpose. Every comma, every period, every semicolon, every hyphen is intentional and it creates a different effect. I tried replacing a comma with a period, a period with a semicolon and tried to see how it flowed and it was dramatically different. It did not have the same potency. I also learned that parenthetical remarks add personality. So for example, if you just have a quick aside, so you're giving a point and then you have parentheses or a yak. I don't know, something random. <laughs> and then you go back to it. It adds a little bit of personality, a little bit of flavor, a little bit of zest. These last seven days breezed by a lot faster than I thought they would. And I improved a lot faster than I thought I would. I've never written an article in my life before, but now here I am with three of my own that I can genuinely say that I'm proud of. I encourage you to do the same thing. And it doesn't just have to be with writing because no matter the medium, the means are the same. As Yoji Yamamoto said, start copying what you love. Copy, 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 copy. And at the end of the copy, you will find yourself. <laughs>